Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a quiz app in Unity and welcome to episode 5. This tutorial we're going to create a question designer script which will pass it along to the question hold script which will display it on our screen. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, up till now we have the question display script, which is this one right here. Uh, but we need a script which is specifically for creating questions and answers. So what we're going to do is we're going to create that script and we're going to just add two questions for now. And obviously as we go further on, we will design more questions and randomize them. So let's go down here, right click, create C sharp script, and we'll call this one question generate. And it's open that script up again. Sometimes Unity does that. It opens your previous script up rather than the one you want to open up, but it doesn't matter too much. So this script is going to be all about generating questions. So we can kind of use what we've written here, um, but for now, let's get rid of that annotation. We don't need it. And let's start by creating a couple of variables. So ultimately what we're doing here is pretty much what we've done down here, but we're going to utilize these as well to pass things from one script to another. So that means that we can say in this script, public string, and we're going to say actual answer with a semicolon. And we should probably put that as static because other scripts are going to want to talk to this script. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this right here and then we're going to also provide it with the actual answer in this script and we're going to do this in the start method but we are going to switch over to update again once we have developed the script further. So for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these five lines of code from one script to the other and you will get errors here reason being is because these don't exist. However, we can actually use this to our advantage because we can now relate everything to this question display script. So the clever thing would be to say, instead of screen question dot get component text, and remember we are in question generate now, we can say question display dot, and then down the list, you'll see new question. So if we click that, what we've done there is we have said that question display dot new question, which is this variable right here, is actually equal to this question. And once again, we can use it to our advantage by saying for answer A, question display dot new A. So once again, we've said that this variable here is equal to this bit of text. And once again, we can do this, copy that, place it there, change that to B, down here, change that to C, and finally, that in there, change that to D. Now, things may go not astray here, but they may not align up in terms of time, <clears throat> excuse me. So we may need to adjust it even further, but for now, for all intents and purposes, what this script is doing is generating a question. Now we need to actually put the correct answer to this. So we're going to say actual answer equals A with a semicolon. Now, the reason we do this is to prepare for the next tutorial. You'll always find when coding, you're doing a lot of preparing for the future, simply because if you don't, you end up backtracking far too much and probably wasting time to some degree. But what we're doing here is we're allowing the answer boxes to recognize which is the correct answer. So save that script for now. So we've generated this question. Now we need to feed it to here. So we've already fed it into these variables, 
but we need these variables to actually feed into the question. So what we do here is I've always found the best way is to just add the variable itself. So in this case, new question. And this one will be new A. This one will be new B. This one will be new C. And this one is new D. So save that script as well. Now, remember that this question display doesn't contain any text whatsoever. It only contains variables and references to objects. So now, if we press play when we've applied this script, we should see all of this text transfer on screen. Because remember, this script doesn't deal with anything on screen at all. It only feeds info to the other script. So if we head back into Unity, and let's apply question generate to our master control. Now this is where we may end up with a slight timing issue, but if we do, we can easily fix it. So let's press play and see what we get. Perfect. So now we can see that this question is being applied from one script to the other. Now there's many, many different ways to kind of deal with this, but ultimately what we need to do is we need to advance our question generate script further. So remember when I said that we're going to have it in start, but then move it to void update? Well, this is where we need to put in here now that we are generating a question. So we need to get that in motion. And then obviously we can eventually create random questions. So for now, we need to say public bool. So we're using a Boolean to detect whether we have generated a question or not. And if we have, then we don't need to generate another right now. So public bool, and we can call this one um, displaying question. By default, we'll make that equal to false because when the script starts, we won't be displaying a question. Now, if we go into void update down here, we are now going to use an if statement to say, are we currently displaying a question or not? And if we are, then we should do something. So if, and then in brackets, displaying question equals, and we're using a double equals here, I'll explain in just a moment, false, close bracket, and then open curly bracket. So much like the methods and the class, we're opening a curly bracket to dictate that this is a section of code specific to this section right here. And the reason we use a double equals is because that is the way the script is able to recognize, are we stating, are we asking, are we changing? So if you have a single equals, you are changing something. So like for example, up here, we have a single equals that's saying we're changing or making something here. A double equals, you can think of it as questioning. So it's asking a question. Is it equal to false? So it may seem primitive in some degree, um, but that's just the way it works, really. So if you see a double equals, you can think of it as we're asking a question. So if this Boolean up here is equal to false, then what do we do? Well, we can place this here. So let's cut that out of there from start and place it in here. Now, one of the key thing that we do have to change here is if we are displaying a question, we need to instantly change this to true. So displaying question equals true, semicolon and save. So what that will do is it will tell the script that we are currently displaying a question. We don't need to generate a new one. And because we've now moved that from void start into void update, we can get rid of annotations and void start. No point having them, no point wasting empty lines of code and resave the script. So let's just quickly run through what's going on here because I realize it can be a little bit daunting to new people. This script is generating a question, but only if we are currently not displaying a question. So for example, the way we want all this to work is we generate a question, 
We answer it, we go through the sequence, and then we tell this script, remember we tell this script that we are no longer displaying the question and want to generate a new question. So because other scripts are going to talk to this one as well, specifically this one, we need to change that to static. And I'm hoping some of you did pick up on that as I was rambling on there. So let's save once again. So this whole function will still work exactly the same as it has previously if we head back into Unity. And let's press play. Now, this is where that timing issue comes in. Remember I said uh, we could have a timing issue? This is a classic example. Now, I was hoping this would happen so I could explain a little bit more in visual terms what I meant by that. So essentially what's happened is this script has tried to display a question before it's even been generated because this is running after this has ran. Now, the great way to get around this is a coroutine. And a coroutine allows us to manipulate time to some degree via C-sharp scripting. So we are going to place these lines of code inside a coroutine. And obviously it is going to change uh, over time. Um, in fact, I, I think the best way to probably do it is to kind of feed again. But I do want to get into coroutines now rather than later because we're going to use coroutines for sequencing later on. So let's place this into a coroutine for now. And then, again, once we've learned more, we can jiggle it around. So, to declare a coroutine, we use the term iEnumerator. Make sure you don't select iEnumerable, because that will not work. It needs to be iEnumerator. And we can call this anything we want, but probably wise to call it something relevant. So let's call it um, push text on screen, open close bracket, open curly bracket, and now what we need to do is we need to prevent it from doing anything instantly. And we can give a slight delay to the script if we need to. So yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and in brackets, let's wait for just a um, quarter of a second. So 0.25F. Now, you'll have noticed something I've done there, which I haven't done before, and that's put an F after a number. If you're using a decimal number, you always have to put the F after it. Even if you use a whole number, it, you can put it after the whole number. It doesn't really matter too much. But whenever you use a decimal number, it's always uh, handy to put that F there. Because if you don't, you end up with an error, as you can see. So make sure that F is there. So once we've waited for just a quarter of a second, we can remove these lines of code and place them down here. Now we need to tell the script to run this coroutine and we'll do it in void start again so we'll say start coroutine and then in brackets we'll put the name of that coroutine. In this case for me it's push text on screen, oh, close bracket, close bracket and semicolon to close the line out and save. So now, because we did have that timing issue of when lines of code were running between two separate scripts, we can eliminate that delay by using the coroutine. So if we head back into Unity, press play, and there we go. We've now fixed our error. As I said, things may change later on. It just depends um, how we get this working and the best course of action when creating this. Uh, but it's always wise to learn um, coroutines simply because when we create a sequence of events uh, for example when we've clicked a button and we do something else um, we're going to need to do different things so for the next tutorial what we're going to do is I think we should um, get our buttons functioning so we'll create a script which applies to our buttons and we'll get them to either say yep we got the right answer or nope you got the wrong answer so until that next tutorial Thanks very much for watching, guys.